Welcome back friends. I'm Amanda with the Happy Homestead and today is Monday, August 29th and we are going to close out the month of August for the Every Bit Counts Challenge. And I'm really excited because this has been exhausting. <laughs> so exhausting that yesterday and the day before Saturday and Sunday I didn't film I'm sorry <laughs> but I'm also not I needed the I needed some mental health days I just needed some time to live and uh, focus on other things I did preserve on Saturday though I preserved seven quarts of this basically turkey soup. It's um, carrots, onions, celery, some herbs, some homemade chicken bone broth, and then turkey breast, and pressure canned that for about an hour and a half for the quarts, and I did that all on Saturday, so that was seven quarts of that, and what I'll use this for is this winter. It's fantastic just to open a jar, put it on the stove top with some rice or some pasta, and have basically like a chicken rice or chicken noodle soup, but with turkey. I can also use this as a pot pie base, like a turkey pot pie, and just put it onto a skillet. First make a roux, right? And then slowly add the liquid um, to make a really good thick sauce within our turkey pot pie. So seven quarts of that done. Yesterday, Sunday, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Again, I just needed some mental health days and... Uh, I'm in a much better headspace today, <laughs> so I'm glad I did. But I'm gonna make up for it. I've got a lot to do over these next three or four days now to finish out the month and, and I know exactly what I need to do. So two things for today. First, I just picked these from our backyard garden. I know, right, a lot. <laughs> Not so much, but a good little handful our neighbor from two houses down the street she grow you think some of these other people grow a lot of food you should see my neighbor she is with definitely within her mid 60s maybe late 60s and her entire backyard we're talking like a half of an acre is a garden it is phenomenal and she obviously preserves a lot of it for herself, but she donates more than half of it to the hungry within our community. Just an amazing woman, amazing woman. She stopped by, I think on Saturday, and gave me a big bag of green beans. It was so kind and so welcomed. So today, and I think these are like the dragon tongue. Um, you can see the, the purple streaks. You see those purple streaks? I think this is the dragon tongue bean. Um, we are gonna pressure can these. Now, I already did pressure can a boatload of green beans back in July, but uh, in quarts, and I think I have like 38 or 37 quarts of green beans in our pantry, but I'm gonna do these in pints. And so we're gonna get all of these beans snapped in jars and in the pressure canner today to get them processed. The second thing I'm gonna do to make up for yesterday is I have two gallons of gorgeous raw milk from my friend's farm, and I am going to make a blue cheese today. Now, if you're familiar with cheese making at all, it is a process. It happens over, uh, the process itself is over a couple of days for blue cheese, but then it has to age, and that ages for months, right? So I'm gonna make the blue cheese today, and start that process so you can see it over the next few days. And then when it's finally done, maybe I'll show you an update. But that's what we're gonna do to preserve those two beautiful gallons of milk. First, let's get snapping. The pressure canner is off of the heat. 
I will soon pull those cans out. I ended up with seven pints of green beans, so happy about that. All right, let's get working on our blue cheese. Very excited for this process. So I am not going to show you every last step because there are a lot of steps. It spans multiple days, but I will update you as the video progresses during this week and kind of show you where we are with everything. I am doing a Stilton style cheese, which is on page 228 of the home cheese making book. This is my cheese Bible. I've been using this book for over a year. I have made a majority of the recipes and it is simple to follow and it does not require uh, raw milk. If you don't have access to raw milk, you can use store-bought milk and it doesn't require lots of it. There's some recipes that are like four to six gallons, but most of them are one to two. And we're using a two gallon recipe today. So I am going to, I've got two, beautiful gallons of raw milk. Uh, I also have two cups of cream, additional cream from our gallon in the fridge. Uh, so two gallons, two cups cream. I'm gonna put that in my big pot. I'm gonna bring that up to 86 degrees, I believe. Yep, 86 degrees. And then I'll stir in my starter cultures, let them sit. And then we're gonna add some rennet, let that sit, and then we'll cut our curds and do all the fun stuff. Today, uh, two things, you saw me get up, well, you didn't know what time it was, but it was really early in the morning, like five o'clock in the morning, where I got up and uh, my cheese curds were pressing all night, kind of in between that cheesecloth. And I broke it up into like approximately one inch pieces, added some Redmond sil Real Salt, two tablespoons of Redmond Real Salt, mixed it up, and then I put it in my cheese form my cheese mold and so that's what this is right here i have it in a cheese press i don't have a lot of weight going down on it it's going to sit in here uh, for 12 hours until till tonight and then i'll take it out of the press and maybe out of the mold if it can keep its shape pretty well and it's just going to be rotated every day um, and the whole purpose of that is to really let the cultures evenly kind of you always flip your cheese um, and it's about the moisture content with the cultures and the right temperature and letting those cultures start to be active. And then a few days, I will pierce it with a sanitized skewer maybe, and that allows some more oxygen to get in to let the blue cheese spores start to procreate and, and populate the cheese. But I just wanted to give you an update on the blue cheese. So, so far, all is well. Today I'm going to make pizza crusts. I usually have a good stash of frozen pizza dough in our freezer. I haven't had any for probably a good two months now uh, and we try to do pizza one night a week, usually Friday night. So I'm gonna make maybe a double batch. One batch is four doughs, so maybe eight doughs. I'm not sure yet. And uh, get this going to rise. It's a yeast based dough. So I'm going to use instant yeast, let that rise for a couple of hours, and then I'll divide it and uh, individually wrap it and throw it in the freezer. I have made this recipe before on a video. So click above where you can actually see me go through that recipe in a lot more detail and get the, the actual written out recipe for you. So 
I doubled the recipe and I actually think it will not fit in my mixer. <laughs> We're gonna see if it doesn't, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to split this up into two batches. At this point, I'm committed. I'm just gonna make this work. All right, so my dough has been sitting out for probably about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. <laughs> it has more than doubled. It's almost, I actually had to take the lid off and deflate it a little bit because it was starting to pop out from the lid. I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. I find that it is much easier to work with this dough when it's cold. So I'm gonna go put it in the fridge, go about my day. I'll come back tonight and I'm gonna divide this into eight equal dough balls and then I'll wrap them in plastic and put them in the freezer. Okay, it's 10 o'clock at night, so finally got my dough packaged up. I am so grateful. Now have eight pizza doughs that can easily be put together for a nice quick Friday night dinner over the next couple of months. And then you saw me pull the cheese out of the mold, or out of the cheesecloth that was in the mold. Mm. Smells good. It doesn't smell like blue cheese yet. It's gonna take a little while to get there, um, but I'm gonna let this sit over the next couple of days, periodically turning it. I've got this little thing that I put on top just to help protect it from dust or maybe uh, flies or whatever that could get to it. So I'm gonna let this sit for the next couple of days. I'll turn it and uh, I'm done for the night. <laughs> so I'll see you tomorrow. Wednesday, August 31st. The last day in August of 2022, I don't know how that happened, and the last day of the Every Bit Counts Challenge also feels like it kind of flew by. And in my book, no matter what Mother Nature says or the seasons, today is the last day of summer. <laughs> for me, tomorrow is the first day in fall, and I am here for it. I am so ready for it. Fall. Fall and spring are my favorite seasons. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just like the no extreme heat or extreme cold type thing, but oh, so looking forward to fall. And so I am really grateful to be able to wrap up the challenge today. I had one thing I was gonna do, and that was process these hot peppers. A lot of these are from our garden, and a lot of these are from my in-laws that they gave to us two weeks ago, and they've been in the refrigerator, and I've been using them as much as I needed to, but I wanna get them done today. But then I went out into our little backyard garden this morning. I don't know what the dog is doing. It's making a lot of noise. And, um, yesterday or the day before I had a little handful of green beans 
Well, look, I got another little handful of green beans. Y'all, this is from the second planting of green beans, right? Everyone starts their seeds in the spring, but if you, depending on where you are, you might get a second round. I planted these seeds, I think in July and maybe end of July, and they are just now like truly flourishing. And I'm picking about a handful every other day, which is pretty amazing. And that's only about eight plants maybe. I mean, it's not even that many plants. So succession planting for the win. So we are gonna ferment those green beans. I'm gonna get uh, some dilly beans fermented. And then I also gathered these adorable sweet peppers. Ah. <laughs> Get those before the dog does. And so I think I'm gonna ferment these too. I'm gonna take, I'll wash them, take the stem off. I'm not gonna cut them open and take the seeds out. I'm just gonna ferment them like this. It's a total experiment. I don't really know what else to do with them. I've been slicing them and using them in a lot of our meals and dishes, but I'm gonna try something new today and ferment these as well. So three projects on the horizon to close out the month. I've cleaned up my peppers and green beans. I have about a pint of filtered water here. Now, when I do fermenting, for every quart of water, I do three tablespoons of Redmond Real Salt. So I'm gonna do one and a half tablespoons today. And I do that first so that the salt dissolves in the water while I'm getting everything else ready. I got a garlic clove to put in each. Peppers are just gonna go in like this. And I will put a quarter teaspoon dill seeds in each. as well as a quarter teaspoon mustard seed. And now I'm gonna get the green beans packed in. I don't have enough to truly pack it, so we're just gonna use what we can and make this work. All right, as the peppers soften up, I'll be able to push that down a little bit more, but they're pretty crunchy right now. That one's done. Now, if you're new to fermenting and you're interested in learning, um, I have a fermenting playlist of videos where I do just all sorts of things just like this, right? So you can learn all about fermenting, um, the correct ratios of water, to salt, what type of water to use. So click that if you're interested in learning more. And don't be intimidated by it, it is so easy. All right, these are gonna sit on the counter for probably about a week, but I'll check them um, just about every day, making sure everything looks good. I'll start to see some bubbles, I'll start to see this water get a little cloudy and rise up. But our fermenting project for the morning is done. Okay, so the recipe I'm following, guys, is from the Pomona Pectin website. I will link it below. Uh, but it calls for one and one third cup finely chopped peppers. Now, most pepper jelly recipes are going to be a mixture of bell pepper and some sort of hot pepper. And they'll tell you that you can vary the ratio in between the two as you see fit. Now, you'll notice I am using all hot peppers, jalapenos mostly. Um, and so 
I took out the seeds and the membrane because this is going to be spicy and I know it's going to be spicy. So just keep in mind what I'm doing is maybe not what you would want to do. Now the Pomona's pectin recipe calls for one and one third cup peppers and you do not want to exceed that amount. So that's why I am measuring this out with one and one third cup here. So that's two and two thirds. That's double the recipe. I'm thinking I am tripling the recipe here. So I've got my sugar and pectin mixed together and set aside. I've got my calcium water already made. I'm gonna measure out my vinegar. Again, I can't stress it enough. I'm tripling this recipe and it's one and one third cups of vinegar per single batch. So because I'm doing three, I've got four cups of vinegar. And we're gonna bring that to a boil. That's it. They are all in the steam canner. I am so glad those are processed. They've been lingering and figuratively hanging over my head for a couple of weeks now. So now we've got some beautiful hot pepper jelly that will be used for all kinds of things. I envision them mainly on like some charcuterie boards and cheeses this, this holiday season. So I want to thank you for joining me throughout the entire month of August and coming into my home with me and into my kitchen and allowing me to share everything that we've been doing for the Every Bit Counts Challenge. And if you're new to the channel, I hope you'll stay around a while. I try to put out a couple of videos a week, all homesteading, all self-sufficiency as much as possible, food related, gardening related, natural living related. And uh, if there's anything you'd like to see, please let me know. But also just thank you again for watching and thank you for subscribing if you did that. I will see you next time. Stay healthy, stay well. Bye-bye.